Here on this quiet little street in Sherman Oaks, a college co-ed, 22-year-old Janie Richter became victim number 11 in a series of brutal slayings over the past few weeks. The coroner's office issued a report this morning that Miss Richter's body had been found beaten. Apparently her neck had been broken and her left leg ripped from her body. In 1979, William Malone set out to make his very first film. He had no experience in the industry aside from being the proud owner of the original Robbie the Robot suit, fully restored, which he would lease out for the occasional cameo. Squeeze, Charmin, squeeze, Charmin, Zach, squeeze. So what expertise did he feel he could bring to the world of cinema? A monster. At the time, Malone was working for Don Post Studios, a respected producer of latex Halloween masks. Following the release of Alien, Malone took one look at that bony, toothy, dripping with KY jelly creation of H.R. Giger and thought, hey, I can do that. Thus was born Syngenor. So what is Syngenor? It stands for Synthesized Genetic Organism. And he's a new form of life created by a scientist just so the dude can claim he created a new form of life. And like all classic ego experiments, Syngenor was crafted for no real reason at all to be an invulnerable killing machine with a thirst for human spinal fluid. A very inconsistent killing machine, some of his victims are slaughtered at crime scenes for the police to find, others will be dragged off to a nest where they'll slowly be drained by growing podlings, and yet others will remain largely undamaged so they can wake up screaming in hospitals. So there, Malone has his creature. Sure, it may look like a latex Halloween mask when you get up close and it walks slower than Grandma at the supermarket, to the point where characters double back and check its progress right in the middle of a chase, but it moves well, has a nice pointy-headed silhouette, and does get the job done in the end. However, this is about as low budget as an indie creature feature can get, so with all the time and money spent on the beastie, there wasn't a whole lot of anything left to create a worthy setting. So Malone rented a few apartments, got a good deal on some old warehouses, and even snuck in some New York street shots without a permit, Larry Cohen style. Unfortunately, this leaves the first half of the film feeling like a below-average Halloween knockoff, as Sinjinor peeps through the windows of leggy blondes, breaks into a house only to wait for the victim to eventually come across him while he hides behind an open door, and takes out another lady by using the old trick of lifting a car so its tires won't get any traction. Really, Malone? You took all this time to create a monster, even laid in some of that great alligators in the sewer atmosphere, only to have them suck dry some nameless bimbos? Things do pick up a bit afterwards when Sinjinor attacks a sewer worker who escapes and leads our heroes to the breeding nest, which results in a great chase through a locked-up machine shop. But it took a while to get there. On the plus side, though, I do have to give Malone credit for a decent lead. Ted is a bit of a dick. A former cop kicked off the force for being a little too friendly with the bottle. He makes ends meet by spitting out trashy crime novels. We meet Ted as he's being chewed out by his agent for tired derivative work. You know why you're not going to stop the checks, huh? <laughs> you know why? Because those tired old plots are the same ones that gave you that home in Bel Air and that Rolls Cornish sitting in your driveway. So right now. You know, you guys kill me. Every writer thinks that his is a great American novel, but you know what it is, Ted? You know what it really is? It's garbage. I can listen to you all day. And you're right, it is garbage. You buy it. <laughs> Fleeing the scene, he backs into the car of Jennifer Stanton. You gotta look where you're going. You hit me. I did? She's flustered and pissed at Ted, who she thinks is trying to get away with little more than an offer of atomic rocks. What? Atomic rocks. Would you like some? Juicy fruit? Maybe? I, I got a stick of juicy fruit here somewhere. I'm gonna call the police. But he comes through with handy cash for repairs, and before you know it, they go from bickering on the street to a lovely dinner at her place. Sure, it moves ridiculously and leads to a really forced love scene. But I give full points to Malone and actors John Stinson and Diana Davidson for making me care about these characters in such a short time. The banter is good, the chemistry genuine, and when Jennifer eventually falls victim to the beast, it hit me in the gut, as did the sight of Ted falling back on his old escape. And further points to Stinson for selling the big climax. While he's been given a ridiculously huge gun that quickly proves ineffective, and he's paired with a poorly acted scientist who's such a knucklehead that she not only has no problem walking into a lab where the window is open and the lights don't work, but continues to linger as she reads things out loud. 
Stinson has an everyman charisma and does a great job of selling a man desperately trying to think his way out of an increasingly inescapable situation. This man is a good actor, and I don't get why he didn't have a bigger career. He can be funny, charming, romantic, dramatic. Hell, he's even believable as an ex-cop who now plays chess with his former partner in a cluttered mess of an office. The dude's good. As for the rest of the cast, eh. As with his next film, Creature, Malone's visual style is a bit bland, with a few too many shots leaving one squinting through blobs of darkness. Oh great. Now I can't paint my toenails. That said, he is still a very clean visual storyteller for someone so inexperienced. I guess I was just hoping for more of his usual stylistic flourishes, but since none of that was really present in his second film, I guess it's too much to hope that it would be present in his first. Is this film worth hunting down? No. If you want some basic popcorn entertainment, you're not really going to feel like you wasted 90 minutes, but it won't leave you particularly satisfied either. It's always interesting to see what a young filmmaker can do with, with a modest debut, but stick with the films Malone did down the road. You, know, this, you might be entertained, but you won't be scared, you won't be shocked, you won't see anything that you can't see anywhere else. Well, there is an interesting bit where teens break into an abandoned parking structure for a bit of roller skating, but when the monster shows up, even that scene goes out with a blah. Get the picture, Howard.